Hi folks, Simon here. Welcome to another Final Fantasy VIII Remastered video guide. And today we're getting Quistis, her Save the Queen Ultimate Weapon. That's this beautiful golden whip here, which as you can see, is absolutely incredible. So I'm going to show you how you can get all of the ingredients required to complete the recipe in order to remodel this thing. And hopefully you folks will enjoy the episode. And if you do, don't forget to drop a like, stay subscribed to my YouTube channel. And let's get started with today's episode. Here we go. Okay then folks, so the first thing we're going to get are the energy crystals and for Quistis weapon we are going to require four of these. Now if you want to get the weapons on disc one, which you are able to do apart from Irvine's weapon, then you are going to unfortunately have to farm for 40 El Noyal cards in order to get Quistis's weapon because it does require four energy crystals, each of which takes 10 cards to be refined. So we're not going to be using that method since how we're on disc two. Instead, we're going to be farming ruby dragons. So you're going to want to make sure that you use Balam Garden to take you over to the central area here. And in particular, make your way over to this particular forest. Now, if you've already watched the previous video I put out showing you where you can find these guys to farm meteor magics, then hopefully you know where you're going. And you can also see that Galbadir Garden is just chilling in the forest as well. We're going to leave that for the time being. Right, so this is what we need to do. I've just put out a recent video showing you how you can manipulate rare spawns uh, in order to spawn 100% of the time. And seeing as how ruby dragons are quite rare, it's a good little technique that we're going to use here. Now, we're going to run around in this forest, and because I've set the RNG up, the ruby dragon should spawn. Yep, it absolutely does. And you can actually kill the enemy, incidentally. And you'll still be able to manipulate the RNG to keep forcing them to spawn. So what we're going to do first of all is level the ruby dragon up past 45 which unfortunately for me means i'm going to have to level it up to 80 because by the time i've done my second level up it's only 40 which is really annoying but that's just the way it's got to be however ruby dragons aren't all that dangerous so long as you have one party member who's dead if you only have two party members that are alive in the encounter they will not cast their most damaging abilities such as breath which can kill you very easily uh, Meteor, Ultima, you name it, they're not going to cast it, which is really helpful. So now we've gone ahead and leveled this guy to 80. He's going to have about 66,000 health. So we're going to use triple speed here and just start poning him a little bit. Getting a lot of damage in before we start carding with Squall. So even though we're going to be killing him, we don't want to be killing him normally because we don't want to get the experience. And we do not want to mug these guys because you cannot get the energy crystal that way. Right, so let's start carding. And hopefully this won't take too long. Zell can do a little bit more damage as we go here. There we go, second attempt. And even at high level, the energy crystals are the uncommon drop, which means you have a 20% chance per battle. So we've got a few fragments on this occasion. Uh, but hey, that's why I suggested using the RNG method that we used before in order to keep forcing their spawns. So now we'll just go ahead and save our game. Exit out of the menu here, or exit back to the menu. Reload that game. And thanks to that RNG force, uh, we can just run around now in order to encounter the same enemy again. Yep, and that's going to work every single time. So we'll just level the Ruby Dragon up to 80 once more. Uh, one more level up. And now we're just going to start dishing out the damage, as they say. So 66,000 damage. I recommend attacking, in my case, with Squall, who has the card ability. Um, just because the card animation is quite slow. So it's much faster just to get a lot of damage done first. Making it more successful on each attempt. Before actually using it. Get them to about half health. And I normally find it to be quite successful then. Right. Oops, I meant to do card then. Right, now we'll start spamming card. And within a few attempts, it should succeed here. There we go, look. Yeah, still Fury Fragments. Okay, I'll show you one more. Uh, and then I'll just skip ahead until I actually get them myself. But at least you can see that the RNG method is definitely working here. Just make sure you save your game after each encounter. At least you get to keep the items that you find them. 
I feel kind of bad for poor Inoa having to sit this one out. But it's all for the benefit of good in the long term. Right. And now once again, we're just spamming attacks. Try and challenge yourself. Get Scores Gunblade to go off on high speed. That's always fun. Yeah, this is what these gameplay enhancements of the remaster are for, isn't it? It just speeds up this process so much. Couple more attacks. Okay, let's start carding. Or attempting to card. Hey, first time. Oh, still Fury Fragments. One of the good things about saving your game after every battle, apart from the fact that you can force the RNG into your favour, um, is the fact that should anything untoward happen, if like me you're playing a low level game, you accidentally kill the enemy or whatnot, you can just reload and you haven't really lost out on anything. So, I'll skip ahead now anyway. Okay, I've finally got all of the energy crystals that I need, which is four. Um, just to clarify as well, even though it's 19% drop chance, it can be a bit of a nuisance trying to farm for these. But you can still get these even while using the RNG me uh, method that I've used. If you think that, oh no, I'm getting few fragments every time, it must be because of that method. It isn't, okay? You're just having bad luck. Um, I didn't change from doing that method of constantly spawning the ruby dragons, and I still got all four energy crystals eventually. So just be patient, uh, but trust me, obviously, it's a lot faster using it with this method than uh, having to farm for the ruby dragons as well as put up with that sucky drop rate for the energy crystals themselves. Okay, so let's move on to the next item. Right, so we'll do the next two items now, which are the two star fragments and the four sharp spikes. And I'm going to get both of these through card modding. So we actually got star fragments in the last episode, and for that one we just need to refine iron giant cards. Now, if you don't have Iron Giant cards, you can get them from uh, playing any of the CC group members or Headmaster Sid in Balam Garden. Um, and as you can see, since we're going to require two Star Fragments, we are going to require six Iron Giant cards in total. So not too bad. There we go. We've got our two Star Fragments. And whilst we're also on this menu, uh, the card mod menu, we're going to be looking for the Grand Mantis cards. Wow, I've already got plenty of those. Uh, we need four sharp spikes. However, if for whatever reason, maybe you haven't been doing a whole lot of triple triad, you don't have four Grand Mantis cards to refine into four sharp spikes, then that same forest we're just, uh, you know, encountering the Ruby Dragons in, you can also encounter Grand Mantises as well. So you can just, and they're not even rare, they're quite common. So you can just um, card for the Grand Mantis enemies themselves in order to get enough cards. So you haven't even got to play Triple Triad if you don't have enough. Uh, okay, so we've got the four energy crystals, the two star fragments, the four sharp spikes. Only one ingredient left now. And the final item is two Malbra Tentacles. Now, you can actually get these fairly easily using card mod. All you need to do is refine eight Malbra uh, cards, and that will give you the two tentacles that are required. But there's also another way you can do this on disc two. And you get to save those cards, or if you don't have those cards, you don't have to use them. Uh, and that is, if you come to the Chocobo Forest here, we can actually get a Chocobo and ride to an area where Marlboros can be encountered. Now, if you haven't got access to Chocobos yet, make sure you check out my guide on how to do so, so that once you come into this forest, you can ride the Chocobo. Um, yeah, you'll find that in the playlist. It's like three episodes. They're only small, though, teaching you how to get access to these little guys. Right, so what we're going to do now is use the Chocobo to get over to the other side of the continent. Let's just speed things up a touch, shall we? Can be a little bit confusing traversing the world map here. Uh, but we can do it. I've got faith in you guys. There we go. Just go across the beach here. And fighting Marlboros is always fun, of course. They're kind of a staple, aren't they? A Final Fantasy gaming uh, what I want to do here is head north. I like to tend to park myself outside of the other Chocobo forest on this side so that once we've gone ahead and farmed our Malbras, we can just jump straight into the forest to get the Chocobo out of here. Uh, right, now, I would recommend, because of the bad breath attack that these uh, Malbras don't like to do, in just junctioning a little bit of magic to your status defense, and I recommend going for pain and sleep. Okay, that should just be enough to get you through these battles. So you're going to go ahead and save, of course. Now, just bear in mind that the Marlboros are a rare enemy. So you are going to have to 
farm for them in order to find them. But also the items that we need, the marble tentacles, need to be mugged. So make sure you have mug equipped onto one of your party members as well. Preferably the party member that's going to be uh, having pain and sleep on their status defences. And then it's just a case of running around until we find it. You can, of course, farm these guys multiple times in case you only get one tentacle using the RNG manipulation technique that I've already shown you. Okay, one thing I've discovered, it's actually best to junction Confuse and Berserk. Now, if you can junction more than two things, say you have status defense junction times three, then you're much better off junctioning, um, what do you call it, sleep as well, because there's a good chance that that could work. So what we're going to do now is mug with Renoa, and because we've got Bio on our uh, elemental attack, there's a good opportunity that we can actually go ahead here and... Oh, first of all, we need to actually stop all this stuff happening. Uh, we've got a good opportunity here to actually heal this guy so that we won't get any experience without having to card it. So let's just go ahead and heal all the bad stuff that's going on here. And there's a lot of it, isn't there? There's a lot of it. You don't have to do this, but it could help. Uh, let's just leave school where he is. I'm sure he won't mind. Uh-oh. Okay, dissolving acid. Okay, that's okay. Dissolving acid doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, let's go ahead and remedy on Squall as well. So all we need to do is steal now. And we're sorted. Just make sure you've got a nice healthy supply of remedies. It's probably a bit of a bonus. And that's pretty much all there is to this fight. Dissolving acid is annoying, but it's not terrible. I don't know what that red stuff is on Renault, but let's get rid of it. If you do really struggle with the Marlboros, don't forget you can just do it the other method, which is just refining the cards. Come on, Renault, you can do better than this. Let's get that mugging going. Now, you can get bad breath again as well during the fight, um, which is really annoying if you've been unlucky as I'm being here with the mugging. All right, we've got a mild tentacle, so that'll do. Uh, don't forget as well, guys, you can save at this point and then reload uh, and get some more if you want to that way also. But don't forget, you only need two. And you can actually get two from one steal. Now, once you've gone ahead and got all of the marble tentacles that you want, it's just a case of heading back into the local Chocobo Forest here. And then we can head straight back out and make our way back over to Balam Garden. And I think, in fact, I'm pretty darn sure we do have all the stuff that we need now to actually remodel Quistus's weapon into her ultimate weapon, her ultimate whip. Save the Queen, that's the one. Okay, yep, yeah, four energy crystals, four sharp spikes, and two Marlboro tentacles. So, this will be a nice boost to her stats. Let's go ahead and equip this bad boy. And we're sorted. Another character with their ultimate weapon complete. They've only got two more now, which is Irvine and Renoa. So, we're making really good progress here. Both of those will be able to do in due course. You can do Renoa, incidentally, on disc one. But you have to be really lucky with getting the Force Armlet off the spider boss in Dolly. Or you have to keep reloading and defeating it again until you do. Which I just didn't do. But you can do that method. Um, if not, we'll be able to get Renoa sorted a little bit later towards the end of disc two. All right, then, guys. Well, that brings us to the end of this video, guys. I hope it helped you. If you did, don't forget to drop a like. And come back soon for more Final Fantasy VIII. See you then.